Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to Will It Steam Controller? This is the show where we ask the question, can I play this game with a Steam Controller? And of course, the answer is always yes. Today we're looking at Elite Dangerous, the 2014 space trading, fighting and exploration sim from Frontier Developments. In Elite Dangerous, you control one of several different ships, running goods throughout the galaxy, exploring incredible sights, and fighting to stay alive throughout the whole journey in a one-to-one -one recreation of the Milky Way galaxy. As you might expect, this game is quite deep in terms of the controls, so this one was quite a bit of a challenge to get a good configuration with the Steam controller. So let me show you what I did to turn this game from a hardcore sit down at your desk and play with a joystick and throttle game to a laid-back couch experience. Let me tell you a little bit of my experience with this game. I've played this game for way too many hours, and most of that was done with two joysticks. Yeah, you heard me right, two joysticks. Both of them had three axes of control, meaning that all six degrees of freedom were available to me and my ship at all times. I could simultaneously be turning into dock while strafing right to maintain my vector, while also decreasing throttle so I wouldn't pancake my ship on the side of the docking bay. The Steam Controller technically has that many analog inputs, but it was still difficult to get all the control I wanted. I started with the base configuration, made by the developers specifically for controllers. I have to commend them. This game is very complex, and the fact that they can make everything work with just a controller is quite good. This is accomplished basically by what we'd call mode shifts on the Steam Controller. When you hold the X button and press the direction on the D-pad, you look around the various menus on your ship. Holding Y and pressing D-pad directions will open your map, or initiate hyperdrive, and so on. This essentially multiplies the number of inputs the controller has. Each face button has up to four additional functions when combining them with the D-pad. I chose to keep all of these mappings intact, especially because of the graphical reminders that pop up when holding the face buttons. Why mess with a good thing, you know? One thing I did change in regards to the default mappings was to add a second function to the shoulder buttons. Normally the left bumper reduces the throttle little by little, and the right bumper increases it. Because of this, there wasn't an easy way to set the ship's throttle to zero without fumbling with the throttle buttons. I added a second activator to both bumpers to activate when I double press those buttons. When I double press the left bumper, it activates the hotkey to set the throttle to zero. And when I double press the right bumper, it sets throttle to maximum. Ah, feel the speed. I felt this was a good amount of control for the throttle. It's intuitive to me to have the left bumper be able to reduce speed as well as set it to zero based on whether I simply press the button or double press it, likewise with the right bumper. The next thing that I had always dreamed of having with my dual joystick setup but was never able to have was an option for head look. I felt I was missing out on all of these awesome sights this game has to offer, because my view was always locked straight ahead. Steam controller to the rescue! With the in-game controls set to use the mouse control to head look, I set the gyros to mouse input, and set the right grip as a right stick click, which is the hotkey to bring you in and out of head look mode. More accurately, I used two activators, one to activate when I pressed the right grip, and the other to activate it again when I released the grip. This had the effect of activating head look when I pulled the grip and deactivating it when I released it. I was amazed with how well this control worked right out of the box. I mean, there's always room for improvement, but it was incredibly intuitive and fun to be able to look around just by physically moving my controller around. Except when the menus pop up like that. Shoot, get out of there. I then turned my attention to having full control of every axis of the ship's movement. By default, I had pitch and roll on the joystick, and yaw on the horizontal axis, and vertical thrust on the vertical axis of the right trackpad. Simply using the trackpad click as a mode shift to turn it into a D-pad was good enough to get strafing and forward and reverse thrust by clicking into the pad. I was even able to obtain analog control of these axes by turning on analog emulation in the D-pad settings. This gave me passable analog control of every axis of motion using the joystick and right trackpad. The final thing to get right was some things that were kind of clumsy or downright missing from the default binding. 
I didn't like the fact that to change my fire groups I had to press down two buttons. Additionally, there weren't any hotkeys for heat sinks or chaff, so they had to be set to a fire group. What if I'm being hit by beam lasers and my ship is heating up? I need to be firing heat sinks now and not fumbling through fire groups. So I decided to use what I think is one of the coolest and most functional abilities of the Steam Controller, the touch menu. Since I wanted to keep the D-pad as standard for the left trackpad, I put a touch menu behind a mode shift for the left trackpad, using the left grip to activate the shift. A touch menu brings up a graphical interface with up to 16 inputs that you can bind to button or key presses. I used the 9 button layout and made the left and right buttons switch fire groups. Then using the remaining buttons I set hotkeys for heat sinks, chaff, ECMs, and shield boosters. And here's the coolest thing in my opinion, you can set an icon for each button in the touch menu, basically letting you create an intuitive UI with tons of buttons. So how well did this configuration work? Well, I'm not one to brag, but I'll have you know I was able to take out a competent ranked Imperial Courier in my Sidewinder. So I got that going for me, which is pretty good. In all honesty, I think this is a solid configuration, and I should be able to play Elite while relaxing on a couch. As cool as my dual joystick setup was, it's nice to be able to sink into a comfy seat and just play something. So what do you think? If you have any ideas for things I could change, just drop me a comment. I'd also love to hear any suggestions for games you'd like to see me play next. Thank you so much for watching.